Enormous monsters are always fun to think about, especially if they're enormous monsters that once lived on the very same planet that we do. Sure, fantasy creatures can be fascinating and freaky, but nothing compares to the real deal. Over the years, Life's Biggest Questions has taken a bunch of different looks at the possibility of a world where the biggest snake ever still roamed free. Would it be awesome or horrifying? Let's discuss. What if the Titanoboa snake didn't go extinct? Revisited. In some of our previous videos, which you can find linked in the description, we've gone over the many possibilities concerning this enormous snake. It slithers, slides, and squeezes the life out of anything smaller than it and then swallows the prey whole. And clocking it at 45 feet, not many creatures would be able to stand up to it, nor would they want to stand up to it. This thing ruled over its kingdom, and it did what it pleased. So it being extinct kind of comes as a shock, right? How does a creature so monstrous and powerful manage to let its reign over the wild slip from its fingers? Well, that's a, a bad analogy, you know, because it's a snake. But you get what I'm trying to say. If the Titanoboa was so big and badass, how did it die out? Well, there are a bunch of theories that intersect at different points, all seemingly nodding in the same direction, a rapidly changing world. You can crush and eat all the prey you like, but you can't turn back the clock. See, the world was a whole lot warmer when Titanoboas were around. Plenty of enormous animals took over thanks to the relative ease by which they could grow. Warmer climates tend to be friendlier to huge reptiles, so as the world cooled down, Titanoboas found it harder to keep slithering. Their metabolic processes didn't work as well when it was cold, and the changing climate also did a number on their habitat. Tropical rainforests reduced in number, too, and eventually became grasslands. Without a proper place to live, and with their own bodies reacting poorly to the new climate, the Titanoboa eventually died out. Rest in peace, you beautiful beast. Smaller snakes and assorted reptiles were waiting in the wings for their big break, and this was it. With the gigantic apex predator gone, this was their time to shine, and thus began a new era of snakes, reptiles, and other assorted animals that seemed to excel under the new conditions. Eventually, humans would inherit the land the Titanoboa left behind, and we would find ways to be much more adaptable than the mega snakes of days gone by. But that's not what you came here for. We've all lived this modern human experience ourselves. We know how humans go about their business, and how we're running ourselves into the ground like some sort of doomsday speedrun. That's old news. Let's get back to the central focus of this video. What if the Titanoboa snake didn't go extinct? In our past videos concerning the topic, we've come up with a lot of interesting ideas. Stuff like how people in more tropical climates would probably have to deal with these creatures more often, and the possibility that it could make their life very difficult. Plans to acclimate their presence through the use of clever traps and warning systems to ensure our children didn't get digested by a 45-foot living tube. And of course, if we lived alongside Titanoboa, you know for a fact it would be a very profitable snake. Live shows, Tiger King style exhibitions, movies, TVs, and more. There is no way someone would give up the opportunity to witness the world's biggest snake, especially if they got to watch it eat. All of these previous videos just sort of assumed that the Titanoboa would just flawlessly be integrated into the world as we know it though running wild near the equator, being showcased in zoos, and more. But that sort of implies that the Titanoboa just found a way to survive 60 odd million years. Through climate change and the evolution of other creatures, it managed to keep on trucking until Homo erectus started whacking things with sticks. With the way climate tends to work, it's not very likely that this 45 foot monolith would find a way to tough it out through an ice age or two. Plus, if it didn't stick around as an enormous predator, the smaller species probably wouldn't have found such a solid foothold. So what I'm proposing for this revisited video is that if the Titanoboa snake didn't go extinct, the rest of the world would look a lot different. Firstly, because for it not to go extinct, the climate would have to have remained balmy and tropical for a very long time. And secondly, because a lot of the creatures that thrived post-Titanoboa are gonna have a harder time. So let's consider the long-term effects of both of these. First off, the climate thing. That's a wicked long heat wave, right? 60-ish million years of balmy, balmy weather. I know it wouldn't affect the entire world, but it would cause a lot of changes. That would allow for the Titanoboa to really lay its claim as the creature at the top of the food chain. It would slither around in the warm muck to its heart's content, swallowing entire animals and having a great time. This would also have the interesting side effect of possibly allowing different enormous predators to also take over. With the eternal warm climate required to keep the Titanoboa healthy and strong, other creatures would have the opportunity to evolve into massive beasts. Which leads us perfectly into our second point, too. As more creatures enjoyed the sunshine and humidity, they would grow to be pretty big. 
At the same time, these smaller snakes, reptiles, and assorted animals that gladly took over once the Titanoboa disappeared would have no such opportunity. Sure, there are always places for small creatures to thrive, but definitely not on the same scale. Especially if the big boys are always looking for more food to keep their motors running. So, with both of those things happening at once, the world would eventually start to look very different than what we're used to today. Megafauna would rule, crushing anything that attempted to take over under their massive weight. And if the climate's appropriate for megafauna, megaflora would show up too. Enormous plants would sprout and flourish, potentially allowing for more massive herbivores too. Entire ecosystems of gigantic stuff would pop up and if the weather permits, change the world as we know it. If this kind of massive growth continued, and in this case we'll assume that it does so that the Titanoboa doesn't go extinct, I'd say humans never quite make it. The requirements for our existence would never fall into place, and our ridiculous monkey lizard brains wouldn't get a chance to fully ponder questions like this. Funny how it all works, eh? So to summarize, if the Titanoboa didn't go extinct, things would look a lot different. The conditions for such a creature to stick around are so different than what we're familiar with today that the entire world would likely look totally different. 60 million years is a long time, and evolution would choose a very different path. So what do you think? Does my framing of the question offer new insight into the Titanoboa conundrum? Or would you rather we just had to live our silly little lives while also worrying about 45 foot snakes? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more gregarious ones from what is the strongest version of Godzilla. Bazzyman1234YT says, For me, it's probably Heisei Godzilla during Destroya when he's having a meltdown and infinite heat ray. You know what? That's a pretty good choice, and I'm glad that we can both come up with some sweet answers. Eucliptus Euphoria VA says, Imagine Mechagodzilla versus the Jaegers from Pacific Rim. I I don't want to imagine. The destruction would be insane. Eno Yanat Cert Revenge says, When it comes to Godzilla vs. Kong, I predict neither will win. At the last minute, Siren Head will step in and end them both. Now that would be the most 2021 way to end that movie. Jai Norman says, Team Kong. I'm gonna stir some controversy with that one. And Anime Freaks Anonymous says, I was gonna rage if you didn't mention Godzilla Earth. Well, I'm glad we avoided that outright. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.